Hi, this is Shubhendu from Clean Tech Solution. Today we will be discussing about clean room concepts. Clean room is not taught in the undergraduate courses. A student gets an idea about clean room during his or her industrial training. But due to the pandemic situation arising, industries are quite reluctant to allow industrial training. In this video, I have tried to give a basic idea about clean rooms, why it is necessary and how to achieve clean room conditions. International Standard Organization or ISO in its document 14644 says that clean room and associated controlled environments provide for the control of airborne particulate to levels appropriate for accomplishing contamination sensitive activities. This means that if we cannot control particulate matter in any room, we will not be able to do some activities in that room. Clean rooms are used by many industries including pharmaceutical manufacturing organizations. Electronics industry also use clean rooms for manufacturing of IC and chips. Each industry have different requirements of clean rooms. In this lecture, we will only discuss about clean rooms related to pharmaceutical industry. I would request everyone to see the video till the end. If you like the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon. Let us start the topic with the definition of clean room. What is a clean room? It is a room in which the concentration of airborne particles is controlled and which is constructed, maintained and used in a manner to minimize the introduction, generation and retention of particles inside the room and in which other relevant parameters example temperature, humidity and pressure are controlled as necessary. How do we categorize cleanliness level? Various organizations have used different nomenclature to tell the level of particulate contamination. That is the level of cleanliness. ISO names the categories as ISO 5, 6, etc. USP and USFDA tells it as class 100, class 10,000, etc. WHO and EU classifies it as grade A, grade B, etc. CDSCO categorizes it as class A, class B, etc. Besides clean room, we have two other areas in a pharmaceutical industry. Number one, we have areas in which temperature control is controlled and no other control over particles. These areas are called uncontrolled or comfort controlled areas. Normally these areas are found in stores and in offices. Number two, we also have areas under ambient temperature like washrooms, material receiving base, etc. In the next slide, we have tried to compare the different categories. In this slide, we have tried to compare different nomenclatures of USP, ISO, WHO and our CDSCO according to the particle size classifications. At first, you should know that in pharmaceuticals, we are concerned with counting of particle size of 5 micron and 0.5 micron sizes. And also, we take the particle size during rest and during operation. The highest class that is grade A or class A or class 100, whatever we call it, has a particle size of 3520 of 0.5 micron and 20 micron of only 5 micron particle sizes. This is similar in at rest condition and in operation condition. ISO cla classification of 6, ISO class 6 has no use in our pharmaceutical industries. We take ISO 7 as class B, grade B or class 10,000 where at rest condition is similar to our ISO 5 or class 100 condition. In operation condition, it is 352,000 of 0.5 micron size and 5 micron size is 2,900 particles. In grade C or class C or class 1 lakh, the 
particle sizes at rest condition is similar to grade B's particle sizes in operation condition. In operation condition, the particle sizes of in grade C or class C is 35 lakhs, 20,000 and 29,000 respectively of 0.5 micron and 5 micron. We will notice that the similar particle sizes is of grade D at rest condition. In grade D, we do not count the particle size at in operation conditions. Since we have seen the particle size classifications, we are now also concerned with the microbial load of according to these classifications. What should be the microbial load of in each classification rooms? Besides particulate contamination, pharmaceutical manufacturing and testing areas also have to maintain microbiological load in the air of the room. Defined microbial level counts are shown in the slide. As you can see from the slide that class A or grade A rooms have minimum amount of microbiological contamination in the air. Now why do we need so much control over the air in the room? Reason number 1. So that our products do not get contaminated by the air. Reason 2. To prevent cross contamination. But then how do we ensure that the conditions are maintained in the room? We ensure the condition in a room by a system called HVAC which in full form is heating, ventilation and air conditioning system. Besides particle count and microbiological load, we also maintain temperature, room air pressure and humidity in our room. We generally maintain a temperature of 23 plus minus 2 degrees centigrade and humidity of 50 plus minus 5 percent as these are comfort levels of for working. But there are some products where lower temperature and humidity are required. Now let us consider a situation. A person is going to enter the pharmaceutical factory. He has to change his dresses in the change room. The air inside the manufacturing plant is controlled and is maintained at minus 10 PA. 1 PA is the ambient pressure which we consider. That is the pressure of the outside atmosphere is called, considered as 1 Pascal. Now when the person opens the door for the change room, since the pressure of the room is negative compared to that of the ambient, air will rush in from the outside and our room will become dirty. The same thing will happen when you move from the clean room to production area. Air from the clean change room will move into the production area. So there should be a reverse pressure. That is the clean room should be higher pressure than the non-clean room areas. Our rule of the thumb is higher the clean room class, higher is the pressure compared to the ambient or its surrounding area. Now let us consider an area where solid doses form to be manufactured. According to regulatory guidelines, the room have to be supplied with air through an HEPA filter. We will discuss about filters later on. Our manufacturing area of OSD will have lots of particles as particles are constantly generated during OSD manufacturing process. Now if the corridor has a lower pressure compared to the room, air from the room will move to the corridor on opening the doors. This will get the corridor contaminated with different particles and will cross contaminate the products. Hence in our OSD, we have corridors at higher pressure and rooms at lower pressure. Where liquid doses forms are manufactured or processed, powders are not generally generated. Hence, liquid processing zones or rooms are classified as clean areas and the corridors are unclean areas or dirty areas in a liquid manufacturing area or processing area. Hence, if the corridor is kept here in a high pressure, then the dirty air of the corridor will go to the room if the doors are open. So exactly opposite of what is done in a solid doses form, here it is done. The rooms are kept in a higher pressure zone and the corridors are kept in a lower pressure zone. So air from the room will go into the corridor in a clear, in a liquid manufacturing or processing areas. Normally we have three types of doses forms, external, the oral and the sterile route. 
Now, for these all these three different doses forms, regulatory requirements of room classifications are different. For external doses forms, air has to be supplied into the room to maintain a clean room condition through an HEPA filter. For oral solid doses forms or oral liquid doses forms, air has to be supplied into the rooms through an HEPA filter. But WHO recommends that the room classifications should be of class D area. The processing zone should be in class D. Although our city SCO has no such classifications. In sterile doses forms, since the product goes directly into a blast stream, the manufacturing process is much more stricter. Every single step of the manufacturing process is controlled by the room classifications in which room which what process of manufacturing we can do. The next two slides will try to look into the various aspects of which rooms we, we can do what processes. Let us see what are the room conditions that are required for manufacturing of sterile products. There are two methods of preparation of sterile products as probably all of you know. One is called the terminally sterilization method, other is sterilization by aseptic methods. Let us first look what are the room conditions that are required for manufacturing of terminally sterilized products. For terminally sterilized products, washing can be done in class D area. Manufacturing can also be done in class D area. Filling and sealing operation has to be done in class C area. For products which are at unusual risk of contamination from the environment because the filling operation is slow, the containers are wide necked or are unnecessarily exposed for more than a few seconds before sealing, the filling shall be done in grade A zone with at least a grade C background. Now let us see what are the room conditions that are required for manufacturing of products by aseptic methods. Here only washing can be done in class D areas. Grade C or class C areas will be used for the manufacturing process. All filling operations has to be done in grade A area surrounded by grade B area. How to achieve room conditions? Room conditions are achieved by using an instrument or an equipment, whatever you may call it, called an AHU or air handling units. These air AHUs have inside them filters. We also need cooling units and we also need dehumidifiers. But before we go into, in, into the details of an AHU, let us first look how an AHU helps in maintaining the room conditions. Before going into the de details of the AHU, let us see how an AHU helps in maintaining room temperature and room conditions. In the green line, we can see that those are the ducts through which an AHU pumps in air through the, into the air room. There is a terminal filter called an HEPA filter through which the air finally gets filtered and goes into the room. This air is sucked back from the room through our back filters. Now, when the air goes in, inside the room and it gets sucked by the back filters, the particles present in the room are also get sucked out by those back filters into the back into the AHU. This whole cycle is called an ACPH, which means air change rate per hour. How many times this cycle operates in an hour is called an ACPH. For grade A zone, we need a 90 to 100 ACPH. For grade B zone, we need 80 to 100 ACPH. For grade C zone, we need 50 to 60 ACPH. And for grade D zone, we need 35 to 40 ACPH. Let us end this discussion with what is inside an AHU? Now, there are questions which comes out obviously, why do we need so many grades of room classifications? We can only use, only have a grade A classification inside the rooms so that 
uh, we can do all the work. Before answering that, let us see what is inside an AHU and how does the capacity of an AHU depends on what does on what factors. Inside an AHU, when the air gets first sucked out from the back filter, it goes through a 20 micron filter. Then the, there is a motor which pushes the air through a heating coil where it gets dehumidified. Then it goes through a cooling coil where the air gets cooled down to 23 degrees centigrade and then through a 5 micron filter. Now, the capacity of an AHU depends on the air change rate per hour in the volume of the room divided by 60. The capacity of the room is denoted by CFM cubic feet per minute. Now, the more the CPH, the more will be the CFM. As you can see, it is directly proportional to the CFM. The more the capacity of the AHU, the bigger the size of the AHU. And the bigger the size of the AHU, the cost of the AHU will go rise. This will increase the cost of the project and also the cost of running the AHU because the motor sizes will be bigger, the coil sizes will be bigger. Also, since we will be handling much more air, the ducts that through which the air will be going into the room and coming back from the room sizes will be also be bigger. So it is always advisable to maintain the room condition that is given by the regulatory guidelines. There is no need to over design any room. I hope I have been able to give the basic idea of an HVC system which is needed in a pharmaceutical factory. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to the channel, give, give it a thumbs up and click the bell icon.